there is a sophisticated and dedicated lab to develop small educational satellites in uh, Pakistan. Uh, which is small satellite technology and research lab and I am the director of that lab. This lab is situated in IST and the whole purpose of this lab is to collaborate with different students and universities and uh, uh, encourage them to join the small satellite development program. This is the only kind of lab uh, in Pakistan and after IQQ we are going to launch another satellite IQN. Uh, and this N stands for the National CubeSat of Pakistan and we are looking to uh, incorporate or collaborate with several universities and the students so that they can participate in the development of IQ and, and then inshallah within the next two years we will try to launch that satellite. Uh, so uh, the uh, call is open for every student uh, in Pakistan. It is not specific to some aerospace engineer or computer science or mechanical engineer or any other sciences. Uh, the development of a satellite is a multidisciplinary task and from space sciences to aeronautics, uh, aerospace, electrical, computer science, every discipline has a, its own role in the development of a satellite. So anybody can join and we can define a role of these kind of enthusiastic students. Once we are going to develop something very, very complex, it means we try to obtain or gain the skills which are needed to complete that kind of complex mission. It means that we have to increase our knowledge in several fields, which has its own benefits in different areas. So uh, the knowledge enhancement and the skill enhancement is another offspring of these kind of projects. And then the direct benefit of these kind of projects are that uh, usually we need to perform some mission on the moon or any satellite. Any space mission has something to be achieved. For example, in this particular case, we are helping the world to estimate the magnetic field of the moon. The magnetic field of the moon is very, very weak. Since it is weak, we have no uh, not we have no idea about the mapping or the strength of the field at different areas of the moon. If in future there is going to be some colony on the moon or some other these kind of stuff, this kind of information is very, very much necessary. I can relate it with something like uh, uh, when the uh, NASA was trying to uh, go to moon, they sent several rockets to the upper atmosphere just to measure the temperatures, humidity and the other stuff of the upper atmosphere. The reason being is that we need to know the environment there. Once we know the environment of that place, for example, moon or Mars or upper atmosphere, then we are capable of developing something for that environment so that it can sustain that environment. So these kind of missions have several aspects. Uh, whenever we want to go into space, uh, uh, there must be a reason behind it. And we can explain those reasons in several ways. It might be grab of resources, some sort of communication, and maybe some strategic needs. And uh, if we want to differentiate between something which we call a simple satellite and then a deep space or lunar mission, then uh, I can say that one thing is very easy to develop as compared to something which we want to send to space or moon or for example uh, deep space like mars so the significance of everything related to this is that once you develop something very very technologically advanced thing there are several outspins of this several offspins of this uh, i can explain it like this that uh, the people might remember the uh, famous mission of Apollo 11 when the NASA landed on the moon. There are several offsprings of that mission which are now serving the humanity. And one of them is like dialysis machine. In the same way, whenever we work on some very technologically advanced mission, there are several offsprings. For example, in case of Pakistan, I can say that one of the best offspring of this is the uh, some contribution in the socio-economic development of Pakistan. Since the world is moving towards this space, it means that sooner or later, this whole area will be commercialized. It means 
there is a lot of money and potential in this segment so one thing is if we are capable of going into some deep space and capable of developing a satellite which can uh, sustain the harsh environment of moon it means we have something which can be sell to the other countries and it means some sort of uh, uh, foreign exchange and the other stuff so this is the direct benefit of these kind of project in the socio economic uh, development of the country and the, another stuff which is related to technology uh, actually uh, there is an, an organization uh, which is called as apsco uh, asia pacific space corporation organization i think uh china and pakistan are a member of that organization along with turkey iran and i think thailand and two or three other countries the apsco talk to chinese counterparts or chinese cnsa chinese national space agency that why not the apsco states uh, should be given an opportunity of a ride to the moon via this changi 6 mission for that purpose the apsco Uh, called for the bids and asked every country to submit their proposals. Uh, from Pakistan, the IST submitted that proposal that okay, we we are planning to send a uh, a uh, uh, cubesat on the uh, moon along with Changi Six. In the same way, the eight other uh, countries of APSCO they submitted their proposal. After uh, several deliberations and discussions. the finally apsco and china national space agency chose over proposal so this is another achievement for us that among those eight countries we win that project and then we started working on it in the other case that what is the significance of this type of uh, collaboration is that uh, pakistan and china are very very good friend and china always support us in these kind of technological matters since we uh, won that opportunity uh, through a proper uh, and comprehensive uh, sort of uh, uh, deliberation uh, they started giving us uh, the information that what kind of what piece of equipment will they accept in that case it involves several kind of testing of the satellite the satellite is totally developed in uh, pakistan in ir there are several tests which are being performed in china before the final launch and this part of collaboration is very very important because in any space mission the most difficult part is that is the launch vehicle is ready to accept your satellite or payload because the launch vehicle is very very expensive it is uh, very much expensive as compared to a satellite so the launch vehicle manufacturers and the operators are very vigilant that what kind of riders are sitting on that launch vehicle so proving ourselves and our satellite uh that this satellite is capable of riding that launch vehicle it is something which in which china or cnsa collaborated with us they helped us in passing those tests and every other thing and then and just to tell you that uh the development of the satellite was completed last year and then it was transported to china and it has been rigor- rigorously tested and performed several tests which are defined by cnsa and china lunar center so uh, usually they collaborated collaborate in this way and then in future we are finding some other very good opportunities with that it's a sort of win win because uh we usually uh, incorporate some chinese counterpart in these kind of projects as well for example in this particular project shanghai jiaotong university uh was collaborating with us directly and we jointly perform few research uh aspects and missions which are beneficial both for shanghai jiaotong university and the china and also for pakistani students in institutes so it's a sort of win win for both the, the countries a uh, cubesats are small cubical satellites they're pure cubes 
and uh, the size of a simple cube is like 10 cm cubes it means that the dimension of every uh, vertex of that cube is 10 cm pure cube the history of cube set is that in 2000 uh, i think 2000 or 1999 professor bob twiggs in stanford university proposed the idea that why not uh, students develop the satellites since the development of a satellite is a very, very expensive process and it is usually considered that a space agency like NASA, Sparco and other big space agencies like ESA, they can only develop satellites. So they decided why not to uh, bring the size of the satellite to a very minimalistic level, then the not only the cost will be reduced, but also the students are capable of developing it. So they proposed this idea in Stanford University and the student students start uh, started developing a satellite the first cube set in the history later on this idea was very very popular because the development of the satellite involves several disciplines and once you provide some sort of hands on experience uh, to the students within class the overall learning level of the students will be very very high so this idea gained popularity and several universities in the uh, world started developing CubeSats. Following the same trend in the significance, IST uh, started developing the CubeSat in 2009. Uh, and we launched that CubeSat in 2013. The name of the program, Space or Satellite Development Program of Pakistan was iCube. iCube is the satellite development program of IST. So iCube 1 was the first satellite which we developed and launched in 2013. It was also developed completely by the students. Later on, we developed on several other projects uh, in collaboration with some international partners like Propellus 2A, small student satellite 2A is a small satellite. The significance of these small satellites is twofold. The first, it provides the students an opportunity to work on a practical project something uh, which is going to launch in space in itself it has a very much learning value and um, you can say that this is something very much achievable for the students and uh, they're usually proud of that they, they design something and now that thing is pro uh, working properly in space they launched it so it has a very very significant value in terms of students the second point is that the CubeSats, although they are very small satellites, they are used to perform very critical missions nowadays. Uh, for example, uh, I think in 2022, uh, uh, NASA launched two satellites, uh, two CubeSats towards Mars, uh, Marco A and Marco B, and they passed through Mars and uh, they helped in the communication between the Mars and the Earth because Mars is very far away, it's very difficult to communicate with it uh, through line of sight. Another very important project, which is very, very significant is the uh, DART project. Uh, uh, it was also performed by NASA and ESA using CubeSats that uh, they tried to change the uh, movement path of an asteroid by deliberately crashing a satellite on it. And the CubeSat imaged the uh, impact of that uh, collision between the asteroid and the satellite and uh, collected that data. So these kind of small satellites are uh, very significant in terms of real time, real application or real world problems as well. The main uh, catch is that these satellites are developed using commercial or industrial components, not the military grade or radiation hardened components, which are very, very expensive or which are very difficult to procure. Since we use commercial components, the overall cost is low and then we we'll test in, in various rigorous way so that they sustain the environment of the space even uh, by using the commercial components. So this is the beauty of this kind of product that the cost is very low and you can develop it with less resources. Uh, IQ, the satellite program of uh, EST, and Q for uh, Kamar. We also proposed uh, initially uh, Mahtab for that, ke whether to use Mahtab or Kamar, and then we decided to, to go for uh, Kamar. And uh, uh, the same way, this cube set is a 20 centimeter cube, a slightly bigger one, uh, because we have to 
uh, we have to incorporate several systems in it. Once the journey is from Earth to Mars, uh, the, there is a four day journey, journey and the temperatures of the satellites are very, very low, which are not very good for it. That's why we have to increase the volume a bit so that we can incorporate other systems which uh, which will try to regulate the temperature of the IQQ. So uh, it, contain, it contains several other uh, systems, a uh, typical one which in a satellite like uh, a communication system uh, which will provide the data through a deep space network of China. Another system is the attitude control system since we put uh, two cameras on it which can take uh, the images of the moon by uh, changing its direction and for that purpose we need uh, reaction wheels uh, by which follows the simple uh, sort of uh, action and reaction law uh, if we spin the wheel in one direction the other body moves in the opposite direction so this kind of technique a simple physics is used to control the orientation of the cubesat once it is in the orbit and then we have some very good solar panels and power system which energizes the satellite during its whole, its whole journey and once it is in the orbit of the moon and then as i told you earlier we have some very sophisticated experiments uh, in uh, uh, in it one of that experiment is the uh, is to measure the magnetic field of the uh, moon and uh, we have some other uh, novel equipments uh, on that uh, cubesat as well which of which sometimes we need not to disclose that much of information so uh, the overall uh, the cubesat uh, is something uh, which is something very valuable from learning point of view and also from technological point of view so it's a win win uh, for uh, the sort of knowledge seekers you can realize the product which you usually think of and once you realize it you uh, you you, uh, you find out your mistakes and then rehydrate and improve it which is a very good sort of uh, thing for uh, the progression in any field